I did 21 years for a crime that I committed at 17 years old in which no one was physically hurt, harmed, or injured, and I was a first-time felony offender. And I've, I've gained so much knowledge, I've gained so much you know, experience, and I've accepted responsibility for what I did wrong. But what other reasons did it keep me in prison? When Dante Mitchell was 17 years old, he was sentenced as an adult to 35 to 70 years in prison. His sentence is comparable to that of a murderer, even though no one was injured in his crime. Black youth are nine times more likely to be sentenced as adults than white youth. Dante has now spent more than half of his life in prison, and he's not eligible for parole for six more years. You know, when the judge told me he had 30 years, I, 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 I kind of like been in denial a long time. Dante, who grew up in Albany, New York, describes his childhood as traumatic. He witnessed abuse, his father wasn't around, and his mother was addicted to drugs. It was very, very hard for Dante, you know, but he was a good kid. He would man up, you know, he would feed his sisters, he would clean the house. He just did a lot more than a young child sh should have to do. At 11 years old, Dante was removed from his mother's home. For the next five years, he lived in various foster care homes before aging out of the system at 16. He ended up at a temporary shelter for homeless youth called Equinox. Equinox was in Albany, New York. It was just, the staff there were pretty just, you know, pretty cool. They were, you know, very responsive to the needs of the children there. I just never had that, like, you know, having that level of adult support and caring. There was something kind of striking about Dante, and that was how quick-witted he was, how intelligent he was. I mean, it was just obvious the first time he opened his mouth and <laughs> talked about himself was that this is a very, very bright young man. Dante bonded with the staff at Equinox and even flourished during his time there. He got his GED and started working part-time. But after 60 days, he had to move out due to state law. Dante moved in with an aunt and says it was there that his step-cousin introduced him to the idea of breaking the law. You know, I was always the one that wanted to work. I wanted to go to school. I wanted to do these things, so I wasn't really exposed to that. But when I did become exposed to it, it was just like, all right, let's try it. And it just kind of snowballed from there. First, Dante and his cousin tried a few robberies. Then Dante held up a McDonald's where he had previously worked. I went in there with two guns, a mask on, fired one shot over the uh, sign, told everybody, what did I say? I can't remember exactly what I told everybody. I think I said, freeze, don't go, whatever some kid stuff, um, told one girl, put the money in the bag, I took the manager in the back, had him open up the safe and put the money in the bag. Just, then I said, everybody go in the freezer and put a lock on it. I knew they can get out because they have a, it's a safety, you know, because people might get locked in freezers, so they had a safety, but that was slowed them down and I left. I don't know what I was thinking. I, can't have, I couldn't have been thinking anything. Just being a kid, thinking, you know, that's my cousin, you're into it, why not? You know, not really looking at the long-term consequences for that type of life. It was just boneheaded. Despite being 17 and a first-time felony offender, Dante was charged as an adult and received the maximum sentence of 35 to 70 years, which was reduced to 25 to 50 due to state sentencing laws. Nobody was hurt, nobody was injured, nobody was killed, nobody was beaten, nobody was stabbed. And here's a young man who may spend 50 years in prison. All of this happened at a time when rising crimes among teens triggered a public fear of juvenile criminals. They are not just gangs of kids anymore. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. We can talk about why they ended up that way, but first we have to bring them to heal. Thousands of juveniles across the country, mostly young men of color, were sentenced to life without parole or given the death penalty. 
The amount of prisoners under 18 years old in adult prisons doubled and reached a peak of 5,400 on a single day in 1997. We take people who do violent things because something violent has been done to them or they've lived in some place where violence is part of life and we put them in a place to modify that behavior that, it, that runs on violence. You can't survive unless you know deeply um, the power of violence. Sentenced the day before his 18th birthday, Dante entered the maximum security prison, Great Meadow Correctional Facility. There's no real rehabilitation. There's not even a goal of rehabilitation. It's just lock them up, keep them away for a few years, and then somehow, you know, they expect you to be cured of whatever it was that you went to prison for, and you're not. This environment doesn't nurture pro-social behavior, doesn't nurture that type of, you know, uh, mentality or, or behavior, it, it really nurtures you to be the thug, the gangster, the killer, because those guys in this environment get the most respect. For Dante, the road to redemption was not straight. In 2002, he attacked another prisoner in what he says was self-defense and had two to four more years added to his sentence. I'm not a model prisoner. I'm not perfect. And I've had issues, disciplinary issues, adjustment issues. I accept all that. I grew up in here, though. This is where I, I, I reached my maturity. I, I became an adult in prison. What did you expect? You gotta be insane to want this and what this imposes upon your character. Who wants to go back into society and come back to prison? Who wants that? And it's kind of it's kind of sad because you would think that any rational person would say, I don't, I, I want to do better. But a lot of guys are not going out there with the skills to be able to succeed. And I realized that this institutions, they don't provide that. So I had to provide it for myself. Now Dante says he spends his free time in the law library, takes college courses, and mentors younger prisoners. It's a couple 18 year olds under my toolage right now. There's one kid, he's just, he's like a firecracker. He's just, you know, but he's, easily influenced by all the negativity like he feels like I got to be the tough guy and stuff but imagine if you separate him from an you know this environment where he doesn't feel the need to be the tough guy what would he do then what could he aspire to because he's a very you know pretty bright intelligent kid but sometimes escaping this reality it's not easy um, he's a credible person to talk to young people because he's been there you know, he's been in their situation before. Whether they recognize it or not, he has rehabilitated himself. He's not the guy that's gonna come out here and commit crimes. You know, he's the guy that's gonna come out here and try to make a difference. While Dante has been incarcerated, new research has found that our brains are not fully developed into our early 20s. Researchers say that means teenagers are more susceptible to peer pressure, less risk adverse, and more likely to be persuaded by their environment. Two Supreme Court rulings, Roper v. Simmons in 2005 and then Graham v. Florida in 2010, took into account this brain science when ruling it unconstitutional to give juveniles the death sentence or life without possibility of parole. They argue that for offenders under 18, a state must impose a sentence that provides some meaningful opportunity for release based on demonstrated maturity and rehabilitation. New York has made small steps to update their treatment of juveniles. In 2017, Governor Andrew Cuomo signed Raise the Age legislation that raises the age of criminal responsibility for nonviolent crimes from 16 and 17 to 18 years old. This new policy does not affect Dante's case and he feels it does not go far enough. You got 18 year old kids here now that don't belong here. I, honestly, I think until you maybe turn 21, you shouldn't be surrounded by this environment. You have to do more for the youth that are coming in and for the guys such as myself who've already did time. We need to do a lot more in terms of raising the age. Um, there are places that are trying to raise the age to 21, 24, trying to follow the science. Um, I think we're asking the wrong question about focusing on this age. We should be talking about um, what do the facilities look like that we send people to and what are we doing in there while we have young people there. Dante is now suing Governor Cuomo and the New York State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision, arguing that they have not developed meaningful rehabilitative treatment for juvenile offenders with long prison sentences. 
With six more years in his sentence, Dante has applied to the governor's office for early release through clemency. What does that six years really mean to us when, you know, we've got, we've got 20? That six years doesn't really mean anything to us anymore. It means the world to Dante. Like, tomorrow means the world to Dante. I just want him to be free. I think he served them. I think he served his time. In New York State, it costs $60,000 per year to house, feed, and guard a prisoner. That means over the past 21 years, the state has spent $1.2 million on Dante's incarceration. I'm more of an asset out there than I am in here. I learned the lesson that I needed to learn. I've learned it.